Today we're going to take a look at this peculiar question called find a peak element 2. The reason why I want to make this video is because uh, from the solution I seen online, the most optimal and correct way to do it is by using a uh, brute force search inside a binary search. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go take a look at the solution and then come back. What we want to discuss is why we need this brute force search and why can't we have two binary search. I replace this brute force search with a binary search. Okay, so let's take a look at find peak element first. So the original find peak element goes like this. We have an array and we want to find the peak element. It does not have to be the max element in the array, it just needs to be a peak. For example, in this array, 2 is a peak because 2 is strictly greater than its neighbors. Uh, 6 is also a peak because it is strictly greater than its neighbors. So in this question, how we solve it is by using binary search. You can see my code over here where we just simply use binary search. We do a three-way check. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go, go check out my three different ways of writing binary search. And over here, we're doing the three-way check. Uh, if we see that the left and the right are both smaller than our current mid, then we return our result. If not, we go left or right depending on the current situation. Easy as that. Now, it is important to understand why this binary search works, right? Because inside a binary search, when you want to use a binary search, the array has to be sorted. Clearly, the array here is not sorted. However, binary search still works because uh, what we're doing is like basically landing on a number, right? Say, hey, uh, is the neighbor smaller than it? Uh, smaller than the current middle? Uh, say if we're three. Here we can see that yes, one is smaller, but five is bigger. Since five is bigger, it's guaranteed, it's guaranteed to the right side of our current element three that there is a number that is bigger. In this case, um, whether it's a peak with two elements beside it or it's against the wall, it's guaranteed that there will be a peak. That is why this binary search works. Now let's take a look at find peak element two. So the changes here is that instead of doing a 1D array, we're doing a 2D array. Uh, so we want to find the peak element inside a 2D array, meaning that the number has to be greater than its uh, left, right, up, down. It has to be greater than all these elements. Uh, so over here in this example, you can see that 30 is a peak because it's greater than left, right, up, down. 32 is a peak because it's against the wall for uh, right and down, but it's greater than up and uh, left. So you can see this is also up. My first intuition, uh, knowing how to solve find peak element using binary search, is to just use nested binary search. What I mean is, we're gonna pretend this is a 1D array, 21, 30, 14. We run the binary search and we find a peak. In this case, say we find a peak that is 30. And then we're gonna run binary search again um, on the up, down, on the column to see, hey, what is our binary search? Uh, we see that our peak uh, is 30, thus we return our result. This is what I mean by running a nested binary search. Over here in my solution, my attempt over here, you can see this exact implementation. This is exactly what I've done in my first implementation, right? Uh, we have a nested binary search. First, we're gonna run binary search from left side to right side. What that means is like seeing like just left side, right side, find a peak element. Um, so what we have done, left side, right side, we find the current middle. And then for the current middle, we're going to find a peak element on the current column up and down. Once we find the peak column up and down, we know the max row. So this element index over here. And then we're going to use our mid, where left and right, uh, to see uh, to locate our exact position. Once we locate our exact position, we're gonna check is left smaller, is right smaller, and then if it is, we return the result. If not, we go uh, either we go left or either we go right depending on the position. You can see how there's one binary search here, and for each iteration of the binary search, we're running find peak element, the exact same algorithm, on the current column, so up and down. Uh, so the smaller binary search, up and down, larger binary search, left and right. However, when I run this code, 
you can see that it does not work. This is extremely odd and even when I asked GPT, it says that both solution using a similar approach should work and have the correct result. It's just saying one solution is more straightforward than the other. However, in this case, the nested, the nested binary search does not work. Only the brute force finding the current max role works. So even ChatGPT failed at this question, which is very, very odd. And when I search online for other YouTube tutorials, none of them explain why nested binary search doesn't work. So that's what exactly what we're going to do right now, explain why it doesn't work. Here we have the, uh, the test case that it failed on. I'm going to make it to a more presentable format. Here are the positions that the algorithm iterated on. We're going to see if maybe the algorithm is wrong, or if not, why what's happening and what's going on. All right, I have copied it over to a more presentable format. Uh, row, max row. Okay, this is a little bit confusing. Max row is just like which row it is. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Mid, mid represents our current elder uh, binary search left and right, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3. So first, elder binary search returns 3. So that means we're on 0, 1, 2, 3 on this column. And then we're going to do binary search to find the max row, which one, uh, or like, uh, a peak, peak roll. So over here it has turn 6, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can see that this is indeed a peak for this column, right? However, uh, you see that left and right, uh, it's not a peak. So what we're going to do in this case, we see that, hey, left is, uh, right is bigger, so we're going to go towards the right, uh, uh, the right. So in the next iteration, you can see that we are on 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, we're on this column, and it's giving me 6. Over here you can see, this is 6. So individually, um, when we're running the inner binary search to find a peak inside of this column, you can see that 13 is indeed a peak on this column. However, it's not the max, this is the max. 13 is indeed the peak, right? So this, once again, doesn't work because on its right, we have 14. 14 is greater than 13. So finally, we have our last one, which shows that we're on 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then it says that, hey, 20. 20 is a peak on, on this column. And you can see 20 is indeed a peak on this column, but 21 is greater than 20. And now we exit the loop because we're like, hey, we couldn't find anything. This test case perfectly illustrates how running a nested binary search dodges like the lar largest number because even though this is a peak, the uh, largest number is over here, right? If we, instead of doing a binary search uh, for the columns and just brute force iterate over and find the current max of that column, say what, how it will go is like first we have three right so zero one two three we're over here we find a max we know that the max is 98 so we're like hey is this a peak overall nope because there's a number on the left that's greater okay then we go to the left we find the middle right we go over here we find a peak which is here on this column we're like hey is this a uh, peak overall nope because 10 is greater all right so now we're between these two, we come over here, we find the peak on this column, 99. Is 99 a peak overall? Yes, because left and right. So like, if we just brute force to find the max rule, this algorithm would work. To answer our question of why the binary search version, running nested binary search does not work, is because, like we've shown here, that binary search on running two binary search does not guarantee that the result will be a peak. The reason why binary search worked on the single single like peak element on a single array because once we uh, say if we have this right just we're going to isolate this as a single array. The reason why this works on a single array is because once we land on a point and there's a number bigger on this side it's guaranteed so here we landed here there's numbers bigger on this side it's guaranteed that there's a peak there. However as we have shown running nested loop, when we run binary search on a single column, it's not guaranteed that towards that direction, um, left or right, there is a peak there. It's not no longer guaranteed because a single binary search only guarantees a single array. This is a 2D array. However, if we find the max, it is guaranteed that element is the maximum of the current column. This eliminates this variable 
whether or not the max on this column, allowing you to use the binary search as if we're finding uh, for a 1D array, the peak. I hope that makes sense. Let me rephrase this to make this more understandable. The reason why a single array works with binary search is because when we run binary search left and right, we're guaranteed to know which side has a peak. For example, if we land on 22, once again, um, if 22 is uh, greater than both sides, it is the peak. If in this situation, 98 is bigger than 22, then it's guaranteed on the right side that there's a peak. That's the single variable. Over here, we have a 2D array. The, the, the peak can be up, down, left, right. We want to eliminate this, right? When we run a nested loop with a binary search, we essentially in compresses this array to a single array. Essentially, this array gets transformed into the maximum of each of its columns. Uh, each of its columns, yeah. The maximum of each of its column. So we have, it essentially becomes this. 8, 9, 99, 98, 22, 21, and finally uh, 20. It essentially becomes this, the maximum of each of the column. And basically, the elder binary search is running the same algorithm of find peak 1, where we find the current peak, and it is 99. However, nested binary search does not work because, in the same thought, when it does the compression, it can compress this to 8, uh, 9, 10, 11, uh, 12, 13, 14, right? Uh, in this case, it's missing out a lot of the larger numbers and a lot of the cases that might be true. So you can see how binary search does not work. Now that we finally explained why nested binary search doesn't work, let's look at the brute force plus binary search algorithm. Over here, you can see we're running um, binary search. First, we get i and j. While i is smaller or equal to j, middle, we grab the middle element. Then we find the current max row. So the current maximum row of the middle column, right? So say mid is here. Then we find a max row of the current column, which is 30. We check is left side smaller, is right side smaller. Um, and if left side and right side is both smaller than the current element, we can return. Why? Because we already know that it's uh, we have the number that is the maximum row, meaning it's greater than up and down. We just need to check left and right, right? And if left side is smaller, if left side is greater, sorry, then we go to the left. If we right side is greater, then we go to the right. And finally, we should never reach this point unless there's a no peak on this map, i.e. all the numbers are the same. Now let's talk runtime. Say if there are m rows and n columns, so m, n, then binary search, since we're doing left and right, that will be log n time, right? binary search log in time. However, for each iteration, we're doing brute force up and down, uh, which is uh, in a runtime of OM. So overall, we're doing log n every time we do m. So the overall runtime is m times log n.